Hi everyone, so today we're going to talk about uh, and actually solve question number two on our Engineering 110 practice exam. So no Mathematica, no problem, uh, so you'd know my puns. Uh, so we're going to look at the following signal, which is displacement in meters versus time again in seconds. Um, and we're asked to calculate the Fourier harmonics for the signal. What is the sampling frequency in delta T, delta F, and Nyquist frequency? What will be the largest frequency in my frequency spectrum? What will be the lowest frequency? What is the dominant frequency? So let's do these first before we get to that next section. Um, so we're given here a discrete series of points. So what am I going to do? Am I going to calculate DFT or CFT? I am going to do discrete Fourier transform. So uh, in order to do that, I know I'm going to use uh, basically this expression that we've kind of developed uh, previously, which is going to be your A sub n is going to be equal to uh, 2 over capital N times the sum of basically R equals 1 to N over 2 of Y of R delta T times cosine of 2 pi N times R over big N here. That's it. So uh, we are going to calculate that. Uh, and get to our expression here. Uh, excuse me, so this is not, this is all the way to n. So excuse that n over 2 there. Yep. So that's just going to be all the way from r equals 1 to n. And we are going to take only the harmonics. Uh, n goes from uh, basically 0 to n over 2. Yep, you've seen that expression before in the notes. So let's go ahead and get started uh, solving this question. Some this problem. So, what I'm going to do now, let's look at our signal. Uh, let's look in particular, we, so we need to figure out for our discrete Fourier transform uh, our time data and our y data. Um, so, what's going to be uh, happening here? So, is the signal periodic or is it aperiodic? It is periodic. So, to reduce my math, uh, especially even though we could use Mathematica, um, I am going to make sure. Uh, to pick the shortest period in my signal. So this signal repeats, uh, let me pick my points here, so here, 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 and then it repeats right after that. So my total number of points, one, two, three, four, five, six. So in my, uh, in my period that I select, again, you could select the whole series and do the exact, you know, you could take all these data points, all 36, and analyze your signal that way. But I definitely don't want to do that. Um, so instead, what I'm going to do is pick my n to be equal to six points here. Now, I need to figure out what is the spacing between these points. So you see that we don't necessarily start at zero here. I'm going to try to draw a straight line. It's offset here. Um, you could kind of calculate this out, and you see actually the total number of points here is actually 36, uh, and we don't end at 0.35. Instead, we add up, we, we kind of uh, basically skip, you know, from uh, we're not off. We're offset essentially by this value. So you could actually calculate the number of points between here and here. We could calc We could count that out real quick. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. So you see here, the period here is zero point three zero seconds. I have 30 points in between there and there, so divided by 30. So my delta t is just going to be, uh, so 0.30 divided by 30 is going to be uh, 30 points there. So that will just be, my delta t is going to be 0 0.01. That's it. So we could double check, uh, get that math out of the way. So now we've asked, we're again, we're starting to get closer and uh, figuring out uh, our values here. So this is our delta t in seconds. So we have n already. We have delta t. Uh, let me kind of erase this right here. Hopefully everyone kind of saw that. And again, if you have questions during the exam about kind of what these points are and the kind of the time components, uh, we could kind of talk about that. I'd be happy to answer it in the Zoom kind of meeting here. So that is my n. That is my delta t. Now I need to figure out, OK, what is my, uh, what else can we figure out here? Well, I can figure out what's my sampling frequency, um, fs. So my fs is just going to be 
1 over delta t. And that is going to be equal to 100 hertz. Yeah. So I've got that. Uh, now I could start building. Let, let's see what else we can kind of answer here. What is going to be my period? Well, my period is going to be t times n times delta t, which is going to be, and I'm going to do this all in Mathematica as well, 0 0.06 seconds. So that is my period, uh, t. I know that my delta f is going to be 1 over t. So 1 divided by uh, 0.06, that's going to be equal to about 16 point, repeat, 6667 hertz. So look at this. Before we even started to calculate harmonics, I've answered, I know what my sampling frequency is. I know what my n, my delta t, my delta f. What is my Nyquist frequency? Well, my Nyquist frequency we know is uh, basically equal to f Nyquist is going to be equal to delta f times n over 2, where my delta f, I could always express it as fs divided by n. So if I multiply that times n over 2, we get those canceled. We know our also our Nyquist frequency is half of our sampling frequency, and that is equal to 50 hertz. So all those expressions that we could have, again, just like in the previous problem in example one, we could solve lots of these questions um, simply by looking at, uh, <laughs> uh, just kind of calculating these values here. I could answer C as well. So let's look at C. What's the largest frequency in my frequency spectrum? We always know that's going to be, for DFT, your F Nyquist. So we've already calculated that above here, 50 hertz. What's the lowest frequency? We know that's always going to be delta F. Now, to answer the dominant frequency and to calculate the Fourier harmonics, now we have to go to Mathematica. And that's where I'm going to uh, kind of flip my uh, notebook. Um, but let's look at some values here. So I know my values, my value here is 1. This is, these are both minus 5, minus 5. Here, this is not, uh, it's a little bit higher than 10, 11. Again, as long as you make an approximation, uh, I'm not going to, you know, be too, you know, you could say this 11, 12. Uh, it doesn't matter here. You could always ask as well. Here, I'm a little bit above my, uh, minus 10, so minus 9. And then this is 5 again. Uh, so I'm going to switch to Mathematica, and I'm going to calculate my Fourier harmonics for this signal. So we've answered this first, uh, this question is now we're going to answer A and C. So let's go to Mathematica. So my T data is going to be I table I times 1. Actually, again, best practices, quit your kernel. Just make sure there's no hidden variables there. 1 divided by uh, 100 from I goes from 1 to uh, 6. So let's take a peek at that data. So those are my time values. My actual dat, again, looking back at those values here, it was minus 1, uh, actually, sorry, 1, minus 5, minus 5, 11, minus 9, 5. Again, that's just coming back from looking at these values here. 1, minus, uh, minus 5, minus 5, 11, minus 9, 5. So, and I could, again, if I wanted to, I could list line plot. Not as fancy, but I could transpose, and we could just make sure these look all right. That looks pretty similar to what we kind of uh, see above. So I could just do, actually, we could do list plot. You can look at, yep, those look about right. So, yep, that looks pretty good to me. So that's my data. So now, again, I could take Tdat of 1. So this is my delta T. My Fs is going to be 1 divided by delta t. My F Nyquist, we saw, is 1 divided by, <laughs> uh, or Fs divided by 2. We know that our, um, so this data, I want to do my big N is equal to length of t dat, or dat, 6. So my period is going to be big N times delta t, uh, delta t and my delta F is going to be 1 divided by t. Answering all these questions just again. So I need to now actually figure out my harmonic coefficients. So uh, we're not doing integration. We're doing summations, remember, for uh, your a sub n. So let's do these values uh, right now. So we can do table from, I could take my, actually, let's just start off, 2 divided by big N 
times uh, basically the total of sum total is your summation. So I need to take uh, my data points from R, and I'm going to go uh, each of those times cosine of two times pi times n times r, uh, and I'm going to divide that by uh, my length or my big N. And I'm going to do this from r goes from 1 to length, uh, big N, just like in the notes. So that would give me kind of that value. But again, we need to do this for, uh, you know, we need to now plug in for different values of N. So I need to repeat this, and I could, you know, I could plug in here just for, if I want to calculate the first harmonic, I could just plug in for 1 here, uh, and I'd get some value. But I need to kind of uh, change these values of n, so I'm going to do a table, and I'm going to iterate from, n goes from, uh, basically, you could even go from 0 to big n. Why did I do only plot from to big n minus 2, or divided by 2? Well, we should know uh, why that is. Uh, so remember, it's just, again, your values here. Uh, it is going to be those values times uh, uh, your big N over 2 is your Nyquist frequency. So that is what we're kind of working with here. Excellent. So let's go ahead and uh, close this uh, kind of loop here. Big N over 2. Big N is equal to 6. And... We'll put in these values right here, and that's it. So that's my a sub n. How do I do my b sub n? Exact same thing. What is my first harmonic going to be for b sub n? What's sine of 0? Uh, yeah, sine of 0. It should be 0. Let's double check it. If I could type in sine correctly. There we go. So those are my harmonic coefficients. So I've answered this question right here. Those are my harmonic coefficients. Uh, you need to make sure, obviously, that you do uh, properly. So again, we don't want to go past this Nyquist frequency. That is your delta F uh, times big N over 2. It is the Nyquist frequency. It's half your sampling frequency. So uh, I could then, if I wanted to, I could do uh, basically the fancy plot. Uh, but I could also just kind of look at, uh, let's see, square root to find my dominant frequency. A sub N squared plus B sub N squared. And uh, actually, I'm going to do my nice plot. Why not? So I'm going to transpose uh, my delta F times I from, I goes from 0 to uh, my length of A sub n minus 1. And that's my, I need to do a table here. Close that up. And I'm going to transpose that with another table of my A sub n a sub n squared plus my b sub n squared. Uh, I need to do the square root. Excuse me. I want my magnitude. Slash dot n goes to uh, from i. n goes to i, where i goes from uh, basically 1 to Starts off with i goes from 1 to length of a sub n. That's it. So let's look at this guy. Close. Transpose. And you can see uh, there's a little. Ah. So delta f, and I need to go square root of. A sub n and b sub n. Ah, a sub n squared. Let me look at this value right here. Ah, excuse me, I need to do. I'm not going to switch from n. A little problem with the code here. That should be better. There we go. See, we're plotting from zero earth harmonic, so zero frequency, to our maximum frequency, which is Nyquist frequency. So we're good to go. So I'm going to do a list plot. I'm going to, I should steal this from my other code, but I'm going to head and just keep it in here anyways. So I'm going to grab here. 
and now I'm going to go flat range all frame true uh, image size 1000 frame style directive flat 50 thickness is 5 bold is 50 and I'm going to do plot style directive red and point size 0 0.3 and filling bottom. Close that up. And we can take a look. Let me zoom out. So what is my dominant frequency here? It is my Nyquist frequency. So, uh, or my maximum frequency of the signal. So that is my dominant frequency here. You can kind of see it already in these points, but now it's just shown graphically. So that's it. So we've answered A through D. Now, the last question here has to do with apparent frequency and uh, basically signal aliasing. So we have two plots here. We're asked, OK, well, what is the frequency of my original signal? Uh, what is my sampling frequency? What is the apparent frequency? Which, if any, is sampled correctly with respect to aliasing? So let's answer. Both these curves have the same, uh, it's the same red original signal, so it's the same frequency here. So. Let's see how many times this period repeats. So rise, run, so one repeat, two repeats, three repeats, four repeats, five repeats, six repeats. So it repeats six times over uh, this 0 .01, uh, se uh, 0 0.01 seconds. So again, time in seconds. So if I want to figure out what is my frequency, it is just going to be the number of time it repeats divided by the period. Oh, let me zoom in. Let me do it larger. So repeats six times over that period, 0.01. So that is my frequency. So my F of signal, frequency of my signal is 600 hertz. So now I need to figure out, so I've answered what is the frequency of the original signal. Now I need to figure out what's the sampling frequency. So here I have how many points? So uh, here we go, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have six points divided by, or six points uh, over 0.01 seconds. So let's look at what that sampling frequency is going to be. So if I have 0 0.01 divided by six, and if I flip that, actually let's go ahead and say, let's see, it's actually five, because I start off, I don't count that initial point. So if I look back at my signal here, so uh, starting from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that is that value there. So if I flip that, so those are my, that's my time intervals, right? Every 0.02 seconds. So 1 divided by this will give me my frequency. So this is my sampling frequency of top. So, uh, sorry, not FS stop, but <laughs> you get my point here. Let's look at over here. So now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So now I have 0 0.01 divided by 20. Now if I do flip that, do the inverse. So F bottom, Fs bottom is equal to that. One divided. 2,000 hertz. So what is the rule for signal aliasing? I need to make sure, to avoid signal aliasing, I need to make sure my sampling frequency is at least twice uh, the uh, fastest or the uh, largest frequency in my signal. So here, this largest frequency, uh, it's the only frequency in my signal, 600. So 600 times 2 should be uh, 1,200 hertz. So in the top, I am not meeting that criteria. So I will have signal aliasing. On the bottom here, I meet that criteria. I should not have signal aliasing in my signal. We can kind of look at that by looking at the apparent frequency. So let's look at the period here. Um, so this signal repeats over a period of 0.01 hertz, essentially, or 0.01 seconds. So let's do 
1 divided by 0. So my F apparent for top is 100 hertz. So that is the actual frequency of my signal, and my parent frequency are extremely different here. So these are not kind of the values that uh, we're going to be working with here. So, or the, not the values that we're going to be working with, but uh, these uh, signals are different, and we kind of confirm this, right? So we saw from our sampling frequency we we're going to have aliasing. We're going to change, essentially, the frequency of our signal. And if we sampled it at this 500 hertz, we would think that our signal is 100 hertz. Now, if you look at here, here we're capturing our signal effectively. So if you look at this, we're reproducing our signal. Like there's no difference essentially in the, the apparent frequency and the sampling frequency in this bottom signal here. So the bottom sample is uh, sampled correctly, and that is given to us. We can kind of de we determine that by looking at that uh, the sampling frequency. So 2,000 is greater than twice. Uh, our sampling frequency here of 2,000 hertz is greater than twice our maximum frequency of our signal, which is 600 hertz. And you can just see that again. This is reproducing our signal quite well. So it's the exact same frequency here. Yep. Yeah. So that's it. That's with number two. So uh, we'll go now. These are kind of the more quantitative questions. We'll head into the more qualitative ones uh, in the second half of this exam. Thanks. Bye.